With such a focus in recent years on the development of zero-emission electric vehicles, yachts and trains, there's one category that's been strangely absent of new designs – aircrafts. The aviation industry is responsible for considerable emissions around the world, so it would seem like a natural choice for electric power, but there are a number of reasons why this hasn't yet happened, and optimistic ideas that could, one day, make it a reality. In this video, we'll be exploring the problems being faced, along with the potential solutions to answer the question of why we currently don't have any electric aircrafts. Welcome back to Most Extreme. Before we dive in, make sure to click the subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss our new videos. Why are electric planes the ideal? In recent decades, scientists have begun to understand the damage that's being done to our planet by the release of emissions related to the burning of fossil fuels. Not too long ago, virtually every mode of transport relied on combustion engines to operate, and while the automotive industry has made massive strides towards becoming emission-free, the aeronautical industry has fallen behind. Aviation is crucial to the world's economy, facilitating not just tourism, but business transport and freight handling. It's expected that air travel will continue to increase by 5% year-on-year year through the next decade, and it's estimated that flying is currently responsible for more than 2% of greenhouse emissions worldwide, which is the equivalent to the total yearly emissions of Canada or Germany. Finding ways to even reduce these emissions would have a significant impact, and if it were possible to design zero-emission aircraft, it'll not only be beneficial for the environment, but will allow the industry to continue expanding without concerns for the damage it's causing. What are the main challenges in developing an electric plane? We're all used to the idea of electric cars, where the combustion engine is completely removed and replaced with an electric motor that draws charge from a battery pack. Originally notorious for having a short range and long charge time, technology has considerably improved recently, and while they remain relatively expensive, electric vehicles can now operate to a similar level to petrol-powered ones. Currently, most electric cars rely on using lithium-ion batteries, and while these may be bulky and heavy, the physics of how a car works mean these problems can be overcome in the vehicle's design. Things aren't so simple with an aircraft, however, because the science behind how they fly in the air is a careful balance between weight and thrust. The heavier a plane is, the more powerful its engines must be, and right now battery technology simply isn't advanced enough to allow for this. To give an example of how far away we are from this being feasible, a battery fitted to an aircraft would currently currently be around 30 times heavier than the equivalent volume of kerosene needed to generate the same amount of energy. Furthermore, as aviation fuel is used up, the aircraft becomes lighter and therefore more efficient, and this wouldn't be the case with batteries either. The other problem with using lithium-ion batteries is that they are notoriously susceptible to breaking and potentially catching fire when at altitude, and this is clearly a major safety issue when designing a plane and is currently not a risk that can be completely eliminated. It has, however, been possible to build small aircraft that are completely electric-powered, but these have pushed the current technology as far as possible. The largest of these is expected to be able to enter service by 2022, and will be able to carry a maximum of nine people over a distance of around 100 miles, which is clearly a long way from the commercial airliners that travel thousands of miles with hundreds of passengers. Hybrid is the first step. As was the case with the car industry, the first step to zero-emission aircraft is to first take a hybrid approach, and there are several ways in which this can be done. One idea which can be used on planes that are already in use is to change the type of fuel. The first aviation biofuel was successfully tested in 2008, and since 2011 it's been legal to fly with a 50% blend of biofuel with traditional fuel. Using materials like algae, animal fat, or even solid biomass, it's believed this could reduce emissions in comparison to traditional fuel by between 20 and 98%. Take-up hasn't exactly been fast, though, and the International Air Transport Association expects just a 2% penetration by 2025. The other method of creating hybrid aircraft is similar to what you'll be familiar with from cars, whereby electric motors and batteries are used to supplement a combustion engine so far less fuel is needed to travel the same distance. On aircraft, this means designing them in a more efficient way, adding harvesting technology to convert excess speed or heat into electrical power, and aim to power all onboard electronics from batteries, leaving just the engines to rely on fuel. This will help to overcome the issue of the weight of the batteries, and if implemented properly, it's believed they could help reduce the weight of a new plane by as much as two tonnes, and cut their fuel use by 10%. The technologies that could make aircraft fully emission-free While a step in the right direction, hybrid technologies can't offer the improvements that we'd all hope for. 
So, assuming that batteries will never be light enough that a plane will be able to take off with all the power it needs to reach its destination, there are a couple of alternative ideas that can solve the problem and could well be closer to reality than you think. Airbus Zero E hydrogen powered planes. As one of the world's two leading aircraft manufacturers, and a result of being based in the European Union, where emission standards are some of the strictest in the world, Airbus is leading the way in the development and introduction of lower emission aircraft. One of the most exciting prospects that the company is working on is called Zero E, which is their plan to release a fully zero emission aircraft by 2035. The company has, so far, released details of three different prototypes under the program. The traditional looking turbofan and turboprop designs, along with an all new blended wing body aircraft. While they all rely on traditional means of generating thrust, instead of using kerosene or any other form of fossil fuel, they are all powered by liquid hydrogen. This is used instead of fuel, but is mixed with oxygen to combust in a similar way in modified turbine engines. As well as the direct power this produces, the process also generates an electrical charge that can be used for onboard systems, as well as with electric motors that complement the main turbines, and this creates a hybrid electric propulsion system. Not only will this make flight more efficient, but rather than producing damaging emissions, the only byproduct of this will be water, which can be safely released into the air. This is by far the most advanced of any green aviation technologies and could well revolutionise the industry. Plasma Jet Engines Sometimes technological revolutions need researchers to take a completely different approach, and that's what a team of Chinese scientists have done, and, if their initial findings can be built upon, could lead to incredibly efficient zero-emission engines. The idea of using plasma for propulsion isn't entirely new, and has long been experimented with in spacecraft design. The way it works is by creating plasma within the engines, and using electrical currents to accelerate the ions, which, when expelled from the engine, creates thrust. There have been limited success with this in space, and it has long been thought impossible on Earth, because most designs use xenon plasma, which is nowhere near powerful enough, and can't overcome the friction within our planet's atmosphere. This new technology, however, seems to have overcome this problem. The researchers were able to generate a plasma jet by compressing air within the engine and then using a microwave to ionize the air. The only materials necessary to do this are air and electricity, and as such, no harmful emissions are created at all. So far, the technique has been used to lift a one kilogram steel ball a short distance, but with further research, it's believed that it could become viable for use on aircraft, although it'll likely be several decades before it's possible. There's undoubtedly the need and the desire to develop emission-free aircraft in the same way as has happened with land vehicles, but it's a far greater engineering challenge than it seems at first. The two main promising technologies are still at least a decade away from being viable in real-world situations, but once they are, they'll have the potential to substantially reduce worldwide emissions. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to Most Extreme and click the bell for notifications. We'll see you next time.